Good morning, good afternoon, or whenever. I'm James Randi, or did you guess? Every now and then, I'm sent a URL, news item, or other contact to a particularly outrageous bit of information that exceeds my expectations of stupidity, and that's tough to do. Mind you, I fully expect that these items will become rarer and rarer now that the formerly science-bashing administration of the USA has changed. But what I'm about to offer you next will certainly bring the woo-woo index back to normal. The address shown on your screen, which we'll repeat when we close this video, takes you to TV station Fox 13 in the state of Utah. It's a newscast hosted by Bob Evans and Hope Woodside, for whom I see little hope, if any. As usual, it's hard to decide whether their gushing enthusiasm for the subject at hand is invented, sincere, a product of their acting school, or just some sort of automatic default. In any event, it's thoroughly sappy. I think you'll agree when you see it. Access to this URL also offers a few other opportunities for you to become even more familiar with how vapid and juvenile television news can get. Exposure to this kind of material can rot the human brain. You've been warned. You'll get an introduction to a runner-up in the Miss Ditsy pageant, Belinda Lee. Miss Lee, who the TV hosts refer to as a, get ready for this, certified medical intuitive theta DNA healer, tells us about the advanced science of accessing theta brainwaves. The inevitable mention of quantum physics comes in, of course, and lowering your brain frequency. What you're doing is you're working with advanced science and with quantum physics, and you're actually affecting matter. This is immediately validated by Dr. Hugo Rodier, who runs on himself about ambient light and electromagnetism that powers Melinda's healing. Dr. Rodier's more specific qualifications are not provided us, so he may be a race car mechanic or even a certified medical witch doctor, for all we know. Certainly his knowledge of physics needs a little sharpening if he thinks that energy healing has anything to do with what Melinda does. But I guarantee that your brain frequency will be lowered as Melinda pushes your tolerance of nonsense to the limit. How any television outlet, even one on the Fox network, could seriously present such total nonsense and irresponsible support of quackery must strain our tolerance. Of course, this introduces the possibility that the citizens of Utah are just poorly educated and can be effectively attracted and deceived by such totally irrational, juvenile, scientifically outrageous material. But I like to think that this is not the case. I urge you to click in on the URL as I close my tirade and go to view news footage to see the comedy features. Traveling some 800 miles north to the beautiful city of Vancouver, Canada, where I lectured just last week at the University of British Columbia, to a full house, of course, I found that I had mixed feelings about the condition of rationality in my homeland. I had to go out and purchase some homeopathic remedies for a demonstration that I regularly give at such lectures. I had little problem finding some Zycam, which as we know advertises itself as being homeopathic, but actually has real but doubtful medical content. It uses the homeopathic label so that the consumer can be charged a much higher price, thinking that this is one of these new, scientific, exciting approaches to medicine, which it's not. This makes Zycam one of the faked fakes, a rather unique position in the quackery business, I must admit. I was also able to find a box of Calm's Forte sleeping pills with little trouble. These are the pills that I swallow at my lectures, the full 36 tablets that come in the box, to demonstrate that I can take 10 times the recommended dosage at the beginning of my lecture of this homeopathic medicine, and still finish an hour and a half later without even taking a nap. Are these expensive pills just slow acting? No, they simply don't work. But more of that in a moment. A side note, the label on the box cautions, and I quote, in case of accidental overdose, contact a poison control center immediately. Duh. When it came to finding one of the counterfeit detector pens that I use in my lecture, 
it was a little more difficult. Hilariously, I discovered that the Drymark company, who manufactures this fake device, have different standards of deception for Canada than they do for the United States. I say hilariously because changing the standards for something that doesn't work anyway is pretty funny. I think you'll agree. And they've turned out a new version of this pen, which doesn't work either. I also showed my audience that not only the detector pen, but another fraudulent device, an expensive but useless UV light that is supposed to identify counterfeit money, simply did not work by performing a live demonstration in which a $10 bill printed on Xerox copier registered as genuine, even though there was a liquor ad printed on the reverse. Now I'd say that this is a sure sign that a bill is phony. Ah, but to return to that pill-chugging demo that I did, you may recall that a while back when I spoke for the TED conference in California, I performed this suicide by quackery thing, and an angry internet columnist named Jack Myers immediately rushed to his keyboard to denounce this as a fake, since he just knew that homeopathy is genuine and that I could not possibly have survived an overdose. Well, I, in turn, immediately responded to him, assuring him that it was a legitimate consumption of 36 sleeping pills done before a trusting audience, legitimately, openly, and honestly. And I invited him, at his convenience, to witness that demo the next time I was in his area, New York. That opportunity came last year. I contacted Mr. Myers and told him where and when I would be in New York lecturing and I asked for details of how he would like to observe that demo. I was prepared to have him supply the pills personally, administer them to me, and stay with me for the next 12 hours to assure himself that I would not die, as he was confident that I would. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Jack Myers also said that he would donate $1,000 to the James Randi Educational Foundation as soon as he was satisfied that I had done this daring deed. Well, as some of you probably know, Mr. Jack Myers retreated from his challenge and fell silent as soon as I told him that I was prepared to be tested by him. Why? I cannot tell. Maybe he got smart by doing some research on the true nature of homeopathy, as I did, but I doubt that. You see, such folks are so thoroughly deluded that they never retreat from ignorance. I guess he just got cold feet. In any case, I have yet to see any apology issued by him, though I can tell you that I'd much rather settle for the $1,000 donated to the Foundation. Mr. Myers, neither the James Randi Educational Foundation nor I personally have ever retreated from a challenge that we've issued. We've followed through over the past more than 10 years, and we've seen others such as yourself bluster and strut about proclaiming that we're not following through, and that's simply a lie. You accused me on your internet site of being a liar and a fake. You challenged me and I responded affirmatively. You backed down, Mr. Myers. We didn't. As for homeopathy, no greater mass delusion has ever afflicted the medical world, except perhaps for that bizarre idea that the mere royal touch of a God-appointed and anointed monarch could heal the ailments of the hoi polloi. That fantasy appears to be out of favor currently, though it may re-emerge at any moment. As for homeopaths, they preach that the vibrations of long-gone substances are retained by H2O molecules and can mystically heal the sick. My ingestion of an overdose of homeopathic sleeping pills, which I've done so many times, is not at all dangerous, daring, or brave, Mr. Myers. I freely admit that to you because I'm being honest. You may be familiar with that principle. Jack Myers, are you still out there someplace? Why are you so quiet? Hello, Jack. Hello. You owe us $1,000, Jack. No? Well, that's Jack Myers, and I'm James Randi, and I thank you for your kind attention.